Hey, what's up? It's Tuesday. I'm Jim for the Rough Cuts, and today's film is Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy is the 1990 film directed, starring, and I believe written by as well, Warren Beatty. Warren Beatty uh, kind of has an interesting film career because he really hasn't been in that many movies for someone who is considered such a big star. He had a big hit in Heaven Can Wait and that was 12 years before this film and then after that he made Reds and Ishtar. And Ishtar obviously didn't make any money and Reds didn't make any money either. And so he hadn't really been a star and been in a hit movie in like 12 years. Although Reds had a lot of critical acclaim and won him an Oscar. So Dick Tracy was kind of a comeback film for Warren Beatty, um, both as a director and as a star. In the 70s, they started working on it. Sp they wanted Spielberg to do it. They wanted John Landis to do it. Walter Hill came pretty close to doing it with Warren Beatty. They wanted Clint Eastwood to play Dick Tracy at a certain point. Like they asked everybody. The big thing with Dick Tracy is, it's like a surface movie, you know? I like how it's shot all like the 1930s and 40s, um, like an old comic book in the style and the, co the certain colors they use. They're only using a palette of seven colors, just like, you know, the, to invoke that comic book aesthetic. And it looks like amazing and the map paintings are beautiful and the special effects are awesome and sort of the action sequences and it's a lot of fun. But unlike like Tim Burton's Batman, which has a lot of style to it, but you still have a character there and you have somebody to relate to and even like the first Spider-Man or any superhero or Iron Man especially, you really need someone to who's like a character. And in Dick Tracy, it's all surface, it's all special lights, it's all bright colors. But it's a lot of fun regardless of that. It still has a lot of good actors in it, like Dustin Hoffman and James Caan and Estelle Parsons. Kathy Bates did a small role. Beatty was fine. I don't think he's like that great. I read some older reviews and people were like, oh, he brings this fun performance. I was like, I guess. I, I don't really get that from this movie. I just think he, he does a good enough job is Dick Tracy but I feel like a lot of the times if there's an explosion in back of him he's like wincing because like ah it's so loud you know he's not really the action hero type as fun as Al Pacino is and he got us a best supporting actor nomination for this movie which I just think is bizarre because I mean he is he is pretty good in this uh but it's just like why for this movie he he did have this boardroom scene with James Caan I thought it was pretty funny you have Dick Van Dyke who plays the district attorney all the characters I think they more stood out because of the people who were playing them but less because they had any characteristics themselves you know and that's supposed to be something your the comic book movies are supposed to exude you know Madonna's character I mean if you really went into that character that character is kind of mentally really screwed up the fact that she the fact that she kidnaps his girlfriend for a long period of time is a bit disturbing they don't get into any of these characters psychologically they're just kind of like you know they're like oh this person's been kidnapped let's go get them and it's reflective of what they're doing with the art direction and the cinematography they're showing it as like these two-dimensional characters of, of a 30s or 40s comic strip that doesn't make it the most relatable thing it was definitely fun and i liked it a lot as a kid but now when i watch it i'm like this is just all style it's, it's such a weird movie when you consider the last movie warren Beatty directed was reds which is about like communism and is a very serious three-hour oscar -y picture that he you know spent way too much time on and was like this big epic kind of movie and then he makes this kind of you know big merchandise super blockbuster dick tracy movie you know he was supposed to be kind of this edgier guy he's the guy who brought in the you know bonnie and clyde really ushered in the 70s and then you're in 1990 and now he's selling toys to your kids you know the guy who used to be you know the badass is now has all his merchandise cluttered around the Disney store. And it's weird because no one, that didn't bother anybody, I guess, at all at the time. That Before he was a gangster, he was robbing from the rich and all this stuff. But I guess, you know, he got older, he wants to fight for the law, he wants to be Dick Tracy. I, don't, I think that says something, not just about him, but that generation in general and them growing up. It kind of gets away with being an emotionally empty movie but a very um, amazing, beautiful, uh, emotionally empty movie. Thank you very much for watching Rough Cuff Viewers. Um, 
If you have seen Dick Tracy and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments. Uh, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Subscribe to my main channel if you haven't done that as well. And follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, and potentially VHX. And follow Earl Barrett Holloway's Tumblr. He does the picture at the beginning and end of this video. And that is it. I wish I had one of those, like, watch walkie-talkie things. Now they just don't seem as cool as they did in 1990. 1990 was like, wow, I still wonder how they did that. But now you're like, we have cell phones, so. Way to ruin that thing in Dick Tracy's cell phones.